Hi, I'm back here again in SwiftPause back office and in this video I'm going to be talking about product groups and product categories. I'm going to walk through how to create new product groups, product categories and all the various settings that go along with them. So I'm going to start here in products and category group setup and in this screen you'll see that there are four tabs across the, pro uh, across the top product group, master group, category and print group. Product groups are generally used for reporting purposes. Um, you'll want a way to group particular types of products together in a logical order um, that allows you to do sales reports and, and so on on that particular item. Um, there are other uses for product groups. For example, at the pods you can um, do uh, filtered searches by product group, um, but I'll get into that in um, probably the next video. So I'll just start by pointing out the, the group number scheme that I have going on here. Um, you can see that alcoholic uh, beverages go from about 12 to about 24. Uh, and then there's a gap and I start with non-alcoholic beverages from 40 onwards and then from food uh, 50 onwards and there's a couple of others um, spaced out here. The reason I do that, um, you don't have to, but the reason I like to have um, a, a bit of uh, a gap in between different types of product groups um, is because I might want to add more groups in the future and it would be nice um, to group them in a in a sensible number range um, so if I come to add some more alcoholic beverages I can use uh, 25 onwards and, and so on it just gives me a bit of flexibility um, allows me to keep the database uh, a lot cleaner and neater um, and it uh, it really does help when you are um, generating sales reports um, to, to find the group that you're after um, or, or a set of groups that you're after quite easily. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a brand new group here but just, just by clicking on new um, and you can edit the group number and the description directly in these fields here. So I'm going to create group 44 and I'm going to call that juice. In the third column here you can see that I have uh, master groups and I'm going to set that using the little drop down here to non-alcoholic beverages. That's pretty much all I need to do for that um, new product group. Um, there are no products in it at the moment but I'll populate that in, um, in the future. So moving on to master groups um, these are the, the master groups that I was assigning to that group uh, just previously and you can see that there's only a few of these. Um, these are used to group different types of product groups together um, so they're very broad, um, very broad descriptive uh, groups of um, products. You can see that I've only got a few set up, I've got um, alcoholic beverages, non-alcoholic, miscellaneous and food. You might have more than this um, but in general um, you, you'll keep these to a fairly uh, low number um, and you might also like to keep a, a number scheme going on here um, I, th these are pretty much set at random um, but you might like to um, adjust those to uh, work in your favour moving on to categories I'm going to come back to master groups um, to create a new master group very similar to how we created a product group just click on new and fill in the relevant uh, fields here just clicking directly into the field and modifying the number and name directly I don't really need that group or that master group so I'm going to delete that just save my changes and then delete it Okay. Moving on to categories, um, now I did create um, a product group 44 for juice uh, and I'd like to have a category for those juices as well. Um, so you can see that these have a similar um, number scheme uh, and similar descriptions. There's not necessarily going to be a category for every group or a group for every category, um, but in general um, they do sort of follow along the same lines and a lot of people do like to have one group for every category and so on 
um, but it really it really comes down to how you want to use your categories and groups. Um, categories are mostly used at the pause um, for various things, um, both for display on the pause and also for kitchen printing and things like that. Um, so these are more uh, pause oriented uh, ways of arranging your products. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new category just by clicking on new and you do get a sub window I'm just going to make sure you can see that yep and here you can fill in all of the uh, different details you might need to um, specify about that category to make it work the way you want it to work so I'm going to give it ID number 44 and give it a name juice and save my changes Now there are a couple of other settings you can apply down here. Fractional is for items that might be sold on a scale. Uh, so for example, deli meats that are sold not as each, but as you know, 0.2 or 0.3 um, of an item um, for 300 grams, for example. Auto add is used to add products together on um, the sales grid at the pause. Um, so if, for example, you have five of the same type of beer, um, it's going to say 5x whatever beer rather than having five individual lines. Now you do want that for some types of products and you don't want it for others. For example, food items um, should in general not be auto add because if those food items have um, instructions behind them, um, you don't want them to add together and combine all of those instructions into one long list. It's going to look a little bit silly when it prints in the kitchen instruction um, you would flag that for any category that contains instructional products so for example the way that you want your steak cooked or the kind of sauce that you get um, or even um, food add-ons so like uh, you know extra um, salad or, or, or what have you um, I'll cover that in a bit more detail at a later time and restricted I don't really use that much but that's typically used for things or um, items that belong in a category where their sale is restricted so um, for example cigarettes you might want to uh, set them in a restricted category to prompt the clerk um, to I, I suppose check the the buyers um, identification the print group is used to specify where the um, the products in this category print um, on a kitchen docket um, so for example this categories for um, packaged juice and it's not going to need a print group but if it was an entree or a main or a dessert things like that you would want to specify a print group if you are using print groups in, in that order um, link one and link two are generally used for um, linking one um, type of category directly to another category um, coming back to my steak example you might have um, a steak category um, which is linked to state cooking instructions um, using this link here. Um, again, that's not applicable for the one that I'm creating here, and I'll cover um, those sorts of examples in a bit more detail in a future video. Um, the remainder of the settings can pretty much be left um, as default, um, and we may cover them in a, in a future video. So I'm happy with the category I've set up here. I'm going to close my screen here. Um, and that's it. I'll also point out that you can change um, any of those same settings directly here on this main grid just by ticking or unticking the relevant boxes. And I'll also point out that you can rearrange this grid in different orders um, depending on you know the description of the category or the category number um, just by clicking on the header at the top of the screen. Um, this is now in uh, alphabetical descending and this is now in numerical descending and that goes for product groups as well. You can reverse the order so it's alphabetical um, descending if you want. And print groups very similar to product and master groups. Uh, you can create a new one just by clicking new and filling in the fields directly.
So that pretty much covers how to um, create product groups, master groups, categories, and print groups, um, and the various different options or uh, settings you might apply to them. And I hope that's given you a pretty good overview of uh, product categories and product groups and how to uh, manage those yourself. In the next video, I plan on touching on keyboards um, and setting up uh, category and product group um, filtered searches, um, among other things. So we'll get an introduction to keyboards and um, various things that go along with that. So I hope you found that helpful, and if there's any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. Uh, thanks for watching. See ya.